Okay, so uh, over the last few classes, uh, I have been discussing about the Levander's rectifier circuits. Half wave, then uh, full wave, then bridge rectifier, and then uh, ultimately the, the filter circuit. Now, while discussing the, the rectifier, the notion of rectification, you know that I have mentioned one point that your signal, the input signal that you are going to rectify, typically this input signal is having typically the input signal is having a variation something like that. Okay? Positive signal, positive half cycle, negative half cycle. The sinusoidal signal is 50 hertz. So with respect to time, this is the voltage axis. Now whenever I say rectification, that means something which is negative, which is not desirable, either you cut it off completely or you, so this is a kind of half wave rectification, so the positive part, the positive half cycle is present, this one is present, this part is present, negative half cycle, something negative, so that was simply discarded. That was, a, that was the notion of the uh, half wave rectification or half wave rectifier. The idea was half wave rectification and the circuit by means of which we can achieve this is known as half wave rectifier circuit. Okay. And then if I would like to uh, make this, uh, I mean if my circuit is something like that by virtue of which I can make the negative thing positive. Right? I mean, you have this negative half cycle previously for the half wave rectification. Uh, this uh, negative thing was uh, absent, completely absent in your output. And if I'd like to make, I mean, a, a design a circuit by virtue of which I can make this negative thing positive, then it is known as a full wave rectification. You understand? Huh? Half wave rectification, full wave rectification. Then we can uh, discuss this, or uh, we have uh, discussed two types of uh, those rectifier circuits, full wave rectifier. One was uh, your uh, center tap transformer. Using center transformer, you can uh, rectify a full wave. I mean, uh, you can rectify a full wave of a signal, and uh, the second one is bridge rectification, right? Either uh, the full wave rectifier using center transformer, or uh, the full wave rectifier, full wave bridge rectifier circuit. And uh, last day we have hopefully discussed the uh, relative advantages and disadvantages associated with uh, this uh, full wave rectifier circuit and the bridge rectifier circuit. And while comparing. Uh, the rectifier, in fact, uh, let me just uh, draw the waveforms. Hopefully, you can remember because our last class was almost seven days back. I don't know whether you can remember all these things or not. So, this is the output for draw once again. This is a full wave signal, input signal. This is a scenario with half wave rectification. This is input. This is half wave rectifier. <coughs> and half wave rectifier. Any doubt? Can I remember yes. all these things? Half wave, then full wave. Even as full because our ultimate objective is to uh, make the signal uh, constant with respect to time. Remember here it is not constant. This is not constant, it is varying, no? Here also it is varying. It is not constant. Our ultimate aim is to design something that, that, that will give you some constant voltage, some DC voltage out of this uh, sinusoidal variation. Because sinusoidal variation, I mean, that kind of signal you can generate from your uh, power station. Your sinusoidal signal with say 50 hertz here in India. So you can only generate sinusoidal signal. So from this, uh, using half wave rectifier, you can have this kind of waveforms. I've just drawn a single, uh, only one cycle. And for full wave, you have uh, this positive half present and the negative half is rectified also. Negative part was absent for half wave, it was present as a, as a full wave, as, as, a, as a positive in the, in the full wave uh, rectifier circuit. And then we have uh, 
discussed about the different types of uh, performance parameters like uh, the average value, the DC value, the RNS value, the ripple content, and how to measure those ripple contents. The form factor, ripple factor, and we have seen that whenever I'm moving from the half wave rectification to the full wave rectification, then the amount of ripple is reduced. And this has also been reflected uh, by virtue of the corresponding ripple factor value. What is the ripple factor for a half wave rectifier? 1.21. Hmm? Uh, 1.21. And what about the ripple factor for a half wave rectifier? 0.48. So ripple the value of the ripple factor is reduced, right? But still, uh, the ripple is there. And you have to visualize that, okay, my output signal, be it a half wave rectifier, out, rectifier output or full wave rectifier output, my output signal is basically a combination of two such signals. Try to try to uh, remember this concept or try to uh, digest this concept from from uh, from this point, uh, right? Because uh, later on, whenever we'll be uh, discussing about the amplifier circuit in, in our next module or next unit, then you'll see that there will be two types of uh, two types of analysis that we'll perform. One is known as a DC analysis. Second one is known as AC analysis. So try to visualize. Uh, try to identify uh, any signal as a as a combination, any time varying signal as a combination of some DC constant ID. signal plus something. Uh, I mean, uh, suppose I am having, suppose this sinusoidal signal is varying on uh, zero DC, as you understood, because this is a zero, this point is zero, right? Now, if this is shifted by some amount, suppose this is not zero, for example, suppose this is not zero, rather, uh, say, let it be, suppose, suppose this value equal to, say, say, one volt, for example. Same sinusoidal signal, suppose it is riding on, on one volt DC. So in that case, this signal can be represented as 1 volt DC plus this sinusoidal, this, this time varying component. Okay, so try to digest this concept from, from this point onwards, that uh, any signal can be visualized as, 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 as a constant half value plus some time varying part, a DC part plus some time varying part, okay. Now, we would like to extract this DC, because constant voltage means what? We would like to have some constant voltage, that means we would like to have something like that. Even if time changes, ideally it should be something like that. It should be constant. So we have some DC part plus some time varying part. So I have to eliminate the time varying part. Right? And for that elimination purpose, we have some filter. What kind of filter? What is the type of filter that you have used? It's not. Uh, what is the type? Is it low pass filter or high pass filter? Low pass. Low pass. Low pass. Because the DC signal, the constant signal, that, that is our <coughs> objective. I would like to generate this kind of signal. I would like to generate this signal, right? And what is the frequency content of this signal? The frequency content is zero, zero, zero hertz. So that is the ideal signal. That, that, is the, that is the signal that I'm going to target signal. Out of this, out of this full wave rectified output, I would like to obtain this waveform. But this waveform contains some DC. You understand what is the value of DC? 2 Vm by pi. 2 Vm by pi is the DC component. Plus, we have some ripples. And these ripples correspond to the corresponding high frequency components. At least with respect to 0 hertz. High frequency is not that it is in the, in the order of kilohertz or megahertz. But at least with respect to 0 hertz, it contains some non zero hertz frequency. So I'd like to just eliminate those non zero hertz frequencies from my output signal, because that is my ultimate goal. I'd like to obtain this waveform, a constant DC. <coughs> okay? So I have to uh, develop some filter. What kind of filter? Low pass filter. Because that will basically eliminate the, the high frequency component. It will retain the, the low frequency contents. It will only pass the low frequency contents. It's not that it will only pass a zero frequency, it will also pass some low frequency values, but mostly it will just uh, uh, suppress all those high frequency components. And then ultimately what you have got, the output or something like that, using a filter one, right? The output or something like that. If you can remember. Still it is not constant. You have a variation, so I'm not getting a constant DC, rather what I'm getting is something like this. 
So it can be considered Right, and accordingly, you have to select the corresponding uh, the R value and the C value and all these things, right? But still, the value of uh, this, uh, I mean, the variation is there. Still, the variation is there. And we can reduce this variation by virtue of many things. Now, today, uh, we are, so with this uh, prerequisites in mind, now today we are going to develop some circuit, a very simplistic circuit, uh, that will, even if some uh, some change is there in our input, so ultimately what is there in our hand? In our hand, I am having this as my input, this red one. The filter output is my input. Filter output is my input. And from that, I would like to generate something that will give me almost a constant voltage. Almost a constant. That is my target. So even if there is some change at the input side, some addition in the input side, because last day hopefully I have also noted down the, the ripple content present in the filter output. Ripple content. This max minus min. I mean this value minus this value. This peak minus this minimum. Max minus minimum. What is my object? My object is to minimize this ripple content as far as practical. Okay. So I have to generate, I have to, uh, I have to uh, devise some circuit which can take this as output and ultimately what does it provide? Ideally you should expect a constant line or even if it is not constant, but that fluctuation is, is very small, something like very small, very small, al almost negligible fluctuation. So I have to uh, devise some circuit like this. So that is our objective today. So notionally, uh, so if I would like to observe the, the corresponding uh, schematic diagram, it's a black box diagram, is to identify this particular block. I am having some variable supply voltage over there, variable supply voltage. I mean, this uh, input that you are providing, this input is not constant, it is varying. So, say for example, uh, the input is nothing but your filter output. Filter output is your input. And you know what is, how does it look like? Something like this. Okay. Now from that, I would like to, I would like to generate some circuit. I would like to develop some circuit, which will accept this as my input. And ultimately, it will deliver almost a constant output to a load. And that is the requirement. That is the requirement. Suppose you, you, you would like to uh, run your experiment that you have already done in your digital science lab. You would like to run your experiment using some power supply. Say logic one, using some five volt supply. So I'd like to have some constant supply, constant five volt. So that is the requirement from the user side. From the user perspective, I'd like to have a constant voltage across any load. But what I have at my hand is a variable voltage, something like this, which I obtain from the filter output. So I have to develop some circuit which can reduce this fluctuation as far as practical. And that circuit is known as a voltage regulator circuit. That means it will regulate something. The variation can be eliminated and ultimately it will give you something which is constant and which can be applicable for uh, the corresponding load. For the subsequent load, uh, that uh, constant voltage is important. Now the current is not important, depending upon that, depending on the current capacity, uh, you have to also uh, tune the corresponding I load, that means the load current. Okay. So, notionally, the idea behind the voltage regulator is that it should supply a constant voltage to a load. Constant voltage. You will see that okay, there is some fluctuation, but you can just simply neglect this one. Assume that it's a constant voltage. Constant, right? So how can I do that? Any idea? Any device? Huh? Any other answer? Zener there. So why is Zener? It acts like a voltage regulator. It acts like a voltage regulator. Okay. Okay. 
Let's have, let's have a look at the current voltage characteristic. Yeah, the answer is right. That is a Zener diode. Well, so far we have in my very first or second class we have discussed about the current voltage characteristics of of, of a diode and different mod diode models we have discussed. Generic model, then we have the constant ideas model, then we have the constant voltage model. We have different types of models. And one thing you know that whenever the anode to cathode voltage, suppose let me draw. So this is your, this is the symbol. So when V A K anode to cathode voltage is greater than some value, let it be say V gamma, where V gamma is your this for the diode is uh, 0 0.3 volt for germanium diode, 0 0.7 volt for silicon diode. Now, if V A K anode to cathode voltage is greater than V gamma, then your diode is on. It will be in the forward bias, and if V A K is less than that, then the diode is off. Now, for the ideal diode, your V gamma is equal to zero. For practical diode, your V gamma is constant, and if I if I assume constant voltage mode, this V gamma is constant. That means there is no resistance associated with that. Otherwise, uh, this uh, this diode, whenever it is on, this diode, whenever it is on, this can be observed as this. You have a battery plus you have some RD, something like that. Okay. Now that is a generic model. Now for an ideal diode, what happens? RD equal to zero, and that V gamma is equal to zero. If I assume constant voltage model, then V gamma is non-zero, but R D is equal to zero. Now that happens in the in the forward bias region. Whenever the diode is on. And what happens in the reverse bias? Reverse bias diode is completely there is no current. In the forward bias region, if I if I just forget about the constant voltage model, then what about the corresponding current voltage characteristics? It essentially follows a exponential mission. I D is equal to I A C to the power V D upon V T minus one. Now you can just uh, neglect this minus one part, and it is nothing but I is equal to I s into the power V D upon V T. What is that I s? This I s is nothing but the reverse saturation current. And what is that current? So how can we measure this I s? How can we measure this I s? Saturation. Yeah, so in saturation. So not not in saturation, reverse saturation current. So whenever the applied voltage is negative, then only can measure because the expression was something like that. The expression was. The expression was I D is equal to I S multiplied with E to the power V D upon V T minus one. Okay. Now when this V D upon V T, this particular thing is much much less than zero and negative, much much less than zero and negative. I mean negatively large. Minus minus right. In that case, this e to the power v d upon v t e to the power minus infinity. Say for example, that is equal to nothing but zero. Suppose it is say this is this expression, this v d upon v t is say minus five or minus seven or minus ten. Then e to the power of minus five, e to the power of minus seven, e to the power of minus ten. That is exactly equal to almost equal to zero. So ultimately, this i d becomes minus i s. Right. That is the reverse saturation current, and it is the. I mean, since it's minus, so the direction is also the opposite. Okay. So how can we measure? So in the positive half, in the uh, when the diode is forward bias, then typically this is the nature. That is the typical nature. And when it is reverse bias, then you have some current, and the am amount of this current is very small, and the reverse direction. Let's say minus. So here, if I, if I consider this is my positive direction of current plus. Now here you understand that this kind is less than the, less than the zero axis. So that's why this kind is negative, but the magnitude is very small, right? Now as of now, our discussion regarding the diode circuits is completely based on the behavior of the diode either in the <coughs> forward bias region or in the reverse bias region. Either the diode is on or the diode is off. We have restricted our discussion in only these two regions. But remember, there is another region beyond these two regions. One is forward bias. In forward bias region, the anode cathode voltage V A K is greater than zero. 
Second region is the, the reverse bias region, but the anode voltage is less than zero. But how much less? That is also important. And based on that, I can have the another third region. Right? That is a breakdown region. Now, what happens in breakdown? I am not going to the device because already uh, you have this idea in your basic electronics class. Now, why this breakdown happens and all these things. Now, in my uh, very first class, I have assured you that uh, whenever I find any scope, I will try to relate the, the, the behavior of those electronic circuits or the behavior of those devices into the real life example, with the real life examples, right? Now, whenever it is positive, no, suppose you are, so it is VF, that is VF is the forward bias voltage. VF greater than zero means what? Or VF greater than V gamma means what? That means your diode is forward biased. Now, everything is fine. That is forward biased, everything is fine. And accordingly, depending on the voltage that you apply, you can have some amount of current, which follows this, uh, this particular formula. I is equal to IT is equal to IS to the power VD upon VT minus one. Right? There is no doubt about it. Now, what happens in the reverse bias? Now, everything is fine. <coughs> we have greater than zero means everything is fine. Positive. Everything is positive. Now, suppose I am applying <coughs> something negative. Suppose your VF is now less than zero. So, that is the voltage. VF is the forward voltage. Forward voltage greater than zero means diode is forward bias or greater than V gamma. Something like that. So, your Zener diode actually acts like a normal diode in the forward bias region. Now, what happens in reverse bias? You apply some negative voltage. Hopefully, you have encountered PIP in the last class, no? Peak inverse voltage. So, okay, you apply some negative voltage. You apply some negative voltage between the two terminals of diodes, like anode and cathode. Minus 1 volt, minus 2 volt, minus 3 volt. So, that is negative, no? That is negative. You don't want this. So, that is off. What is the use of applying some negative voltage? That is off. You are applying some negative voltage. Now, there is a limit. There is a threshold beyond which the diode itself cannot tolerate this negative voltage. Right? It's negative. Okay, in the positive side, you know that, okay, if it is greater than zero, then it will follow this uh, exponential formula. In the reverse pass, when Vf is less than zero, so, I'm coming to that. So, when it is less than zero, when it is less than zero, VF is less than zero, then typically the diode current is negative and very small. That means something around you is not good, you understand it's not good. So, okay, this greater and less, so greater than zero, less than zero. Now, I can once again I can uh, visualize this as uh, something good, something not good. Right. Now I'm moving from, from this uh, theory or from this mathematics to philosophy. Something greater than zero, something less than zero. Greater than zero means, okay, positive. That is good. That is white. And less than zero, that is logic one. Less than zero means? Logic zero. That is bad. That is not acceptable. Right? Okay, so your applied voltage is negative, negative, fine, it is negative, you are in this zone, that's great. Current is very small, negatively small, very small, I yes, in the range of few microamperes. With respect to that kind, if the current is in the range of milliampere, no, that kind is microampere because of some magnetic carriers. You have some magnetic carriers, and those magnetic carriers, they are creating some current and in the reverse direction, opposite direction, but you can simply neglect. With respect to that current, with respect to this milliampere current, you can simply neglect that current. Now, suppose you are aggressive enough and you are increasing this reverse voltage. Minus 2 to minus 4, minus 4 to minus 6, minus 6 to minus 8. Aggressively, you are increasing the negative voltage, right? Now, now try to personal, uh, now try to personalize that particular diode. Suppose you are a diode. You are a diode. Let us personify the diode. Now, what do you feel? Something that is positive, that's fine. Well, now, whenever I'm discussing about this uh, characteristic of the diode, forget about the positive part. The forward bias, forget about that. Now, let's let's visualize the behavior of the diode in the, in the reverse bias. In the reverse bias, 
you are experiencing some reverse voltage. As a diode, what do you expect? You expect that my anode voltage should be greater than the cathode voltage. Va should be greater than Vk. Had this been the case, then I can operate properly. Now what you are getting? You are placed in a circuit for which your anode voltage is less than the cathode voltage. Va is less than the Vk. Right? That means Vk is negative. Or your, your Vf is negative. Very small reverse situation current you are experiencing, fine. Now suppose someone is increasing their reverse bias voltage and you are a diode. You are placed in a circuit. Diode is placed in a circuit, no? You are placed in society. Right? And someone is increasing that, that, that reverse potential, reverse voltage. Either you visualize you as, 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 a, as, as an individual human being or a person in the society. What happens when, when excessive amount of negative volt, negative thing, excessive negative thing happens to you? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> yeah, there is a threshold. There is a threshold, and if something greater than that, in the magnitude sense, if something greater than that is applied, what is the consequence? What do you expect? What do you expect? As a human being? What do you expect? Something that is not good. And according to you. Suppose you are a dart and you are experiencing something, some voltage that you don't want. Right? You are experiencing something that is that is negative. Which is you to become to, to become passive. Okay. And now suppose that reverse voltage, that, that, that negative thing has been increased significantly. Are you going to tolerate this one? No. A point will come, a point will come when the tire will behave something like that. And that is known as the breakdown voltage. You have heard of this nervous breakdown. You cannot take it anymore. And obviously that voltage might differ from person to person. It might differ. The point will come when so as though there is no current, almost negligible current, then a point will come when this voltage reaches Vz negatively, minus Vz, and that is a breakdown point. Now when the applied voltage, when the when the when the circuit tries to apply any voltage greater than that minus Vz. I mean, mod wise. Suppose this minus VZ is say, say minus 10 volt. And suppose the circuit imposes something minus 11 volt, minus 12 volt, minus 14 volt, minus 18 volt, something like that. Diode is not, is no longer accepting this one. And suddenly, the current in the reverse direction increases. Right? And this is something what is happening right now in our city. Now try to relate. Try to relate. I have told you initially that if I find chance, I will try to cite examples from the real life so that you can understand. The way the diet behaves, the way the people behave, the way the society behaves. So everything is to some extent, what should I say? Synchronous. If I just observe the abstraction, Abstraction is there to see. If everything is good, fine. Positive voltage Vf greater than zero, fine, no problem. Vf less than zero, we'll tolerate to some extent. We'll tolerate negative voltage. Minus, suppose this Vz is equal to say minus 10 volt, or minus Vz is minus 10 volt. So whenever this voltage is say minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus six, minus eight, minus nine, fine. But diode is not expecting any voltage, say minus 10 volt, minus 15 volt, minus 18 volt, minus 20 volt, no. When it is minus 10, or if the circuit provides, or if the circuit attempts anything, which is greater than minus 10 in the negative sense, or rather less than minus 10, in a negative sense it is greater, and true sense it is less, then the diode behaves. And an enormous amount of reverse current flows. That is the notion of 
break down. So whenever in the society also you find the amount of the mysterious activities increases in magnitude as well as in volume and uh, obviously the qualitatively and as well as the quantitatively, then you find that a point will come when there is an there is there is a protest, there is an agitation. Right? Now the thing is that it cannot be done for a longer period of time. So there also you can have certain limits. That limit is imposed by this IZM. Right? So this IZM is there, so that relates the maximum amount of current that the diode can withstand. Even if the diode is in the reverse balance, even if the diode is uh, experiencing the breakdown. So now, if you, if you find that current, so suppose in your circuit or in the, in the particular electronic circuit that, that I am considering, suppose the current increases enormously beyond IZM, in the reverse direction also, then the entire performance of the, the or the operation of the diode in the breakdown region will be completely lost. So you must be having some mechanism so that the diode remains, I mean the diode current remains within that range, IZK to IZM. The minimum current, the knee current, hopefully you know those terms, IZK and IZM, the, the knee current, and the knee current means that current, uh, so that is the knee current, IZK. So from where this uh, internal operation starts, the breakdown region starts, IZK knee current, and IZM is the maximum current. So you have to operate the device, you have to operate the diode in such a way that the diode current must be there between IZK to IZM. Had this been the case, had this been the case, although uh, the diode is operating in the re reverse bias or, it's, or the diode is operating in the, your uh, breakdown region, which is not good at all, something negative, which is not good, but if you can make this current within that range, IZK to IZM, within that range, knee current to maximum current, then you can do something good out of it. So protest and agitation is not bad if it is done in the proper way, right? But remember that that current cannot be greater than IZM. And if this current is greater than IZM, then the I square R loss will be very large and the diode will be burned. I have told you that, okay, suppose you, you are, suppose let us, let us personify the diode. You are a diode. Okay, there must be some limit. It can, it must not cross that limit, right? So there is a self-control mechanism everywhere in the universe. The self-control mechanism is there inside a semiconductor device like a diode. The self-control device is there in any uh, control system. And remember our human body in isolation and we the human being in the society, we follow this kind of control system everywhere. Biologically, as well as socially. So, near marble, as long as this current is within that range, IZK to IZM, so IZK, IZK is that current, it has not been mentioned over there. IZK is, this is the knee current. From where, from where this breakdown operation starts, that is the knee current. And this one is a dotted one, IZT. This dotted one is nothing but the test current, which is in between this IZK and IZM. So basically, your IZT is greater than IZK and less than IZM. So IZT, the test current, is greater than the knee current IZK and less than the maximum current. So you have to ensure that my IZT, that means the corresponding test current, this corresponding test current should be in between the knee current and the zener maximum current. So, knee current and the inverse situation current Slightly greater than. Almost the same. You can, okay, so when the applied voltage is just exactly equal to this one, then uh, that value is equal to IZT. Slightly greater than that. Slightly greater than that. Okay. So, if this condition is maintained, right, if this condition is in the circuit, that my, the current flowing through the diode, diode in the breakdown region, zener diode in the breakdown region, when the, when the current flowing through the diode, 
is within that range i z k to i z n minimum knee current and uh, minimum z n current uh, uh, that is i z k knee current and i z m then the diode can be used even if the diode is in the breakdown region then also it can be used for a noble purpose what is that noble purpose voltage regulator why why so because now you see what happens in the breakdown region previously over here, previously over here, whenever the applied voltage suppose Vz is equal to minus 10 volt. So as long as your applied voltage is equal to minus 10, the current was zero, almost zero. The reverse saturation current, IS only. Right? But the diode itself provides some mechanism inside the construction so that Whenever in the circuit the applied voltage is, is less than minus 10 or the reverse voltage is greater than the breakdown voltage, then the circuit is not allowed to apply any voltage greater than that. That reacts, that reacts and enormous amount of current flows. But remember that reaction should be something so that it must not, so that it must, I mean the current which is flowing through the diode should not be greater than IZM. Because had this been greater than IZM, then enormous amount of current will flow, I square R loss will take place, and the diode will be burned. So why the diode is used over there? The diode is used to provide some regulation. Right, self-regulation. So when your applied voltage is just exactly equal to uh, say minus V, it's, a, it's an ideal behavior. It's an ideal behavior. Practically, it's not something like that. It's an ideal behavior. So that's why there you have a constant voltage model. There you have a, a straight line just parallel to this y-axis. Typically, there is a slope. Due to resistance. Yes. Typically, there is a slope. But remember, the, that the fluctuation in the current is much higher as compared to the fluctuation in the voltage. Suppose it was my up to minus 10, the current was almost 0. Right. Then you see that from minus 10 to say minus 10.5 uh, or minus 10 to say minus 11, within that range, the corresponding current variation is significant. Can you get the point? Yes, sir. From 0 to minus 10, almost no current. Reverse situation current, almost no current. It's a range of microamps here. And from minus 10 to minus 11, from minus 10 to minus 11 or minus 10 to minus 10.5, the corresponding current variation is pretty large. Say from say, say 1 milliampere to say 25 milliampere. <coughs> so current, so voltage changes by only 10 percent. Say for example, 10 to 11. 10 to 11 means what? 10 percent. And the current changes say, say from 1 milliampere to say 25 milliampere. Suppose IZT is 1 milliampere, your IZM is 25 milliampere, so 25 times, 25 times, okay. That means diode here creates some self-regulation in the circuit by means of which the negative voltage, something which is negative cannot be increased indefinitely. You have some limit over there. Right? Yes. Can you understand the philosophy? Yes. So the same philosophy is applicable. And that is abstraction. Something which is positive, there is no doubt about that is good, good for us, for every circuit, for every human being, for everyone around us. Whenever it is negative, you know, whenever it is negative, initially the reaction is not that much. It depends upon the, the severe, severity the quality and the quantity of that mischievous activities. Now, whenever this negative thing is greater than something, greater than some threshold, then you see that uh, you have some self-regulation by virtue of which ultimately a noble cause can be solved. What is that noble cause here? A regulation, a voltage regulation, right? Okay. So what happens uh, in, so uh, how can we model the diode in the, uh, so in the uh, order bias and in the reverse bias, everything is the same. Now what happens in the, uh, your breakdown region? In the breakdown region, basically the diode is experiencing some negative voltage. I mean, anode to cathode is negative, it's not no longer positive. But still, 
you have current. Current due to magnetic areas and current in the reverse direction. Remember, this current is unlike the forward current. The, the direction of the forward current is this one. <laughs> that is the direction of the forward current. That is, that's why it is IF. And the reverse current which flows during the uh, breakdown region, that is in that direction. That means in the reverse direction. Okay. So, therefore, that is the notion that that is that is the symbol of the diode. You have uh, Z over there in the in the cathode side. And uh, whenever uh, this voltage, suppose this is my voltage, uh, suppose this is V. Now, whenever this value of the V, you understand this V is VKA, it's not VAK, the reverse wise voltage VKA, cathode potential with respect to anode, VKA. So that one is basically this V is nothing but VKA, which simply represents that it's a negative voltage. Right? VK, not VAK, cathode cannot voltage. Now, whenever this voltage V is less than zero uh, and is greater than your breakdown voltage, then the ride is off. The ride is off over here only. When the applied voltage is within that range, it's off, simply off. Off means what? Open circuit. Right? Now, when this applied voltage is greater than this, uh, greater than this VZ, then this can be modeled as a simple battery and try to understand or try to identify the polarity of the battery. Unlike anode side positive and cathode side negative, this time it is cathode side positive anode side negative. Right? Why? Because it's a negative voltage. Reverse voltage I am applying. Yeah. Yes, in the breakdown region. And this is an ideal model. Apart from that, as I have already told you, okay, it's not that possible that uh, the negative voltage is exactly equal to minus 10. It's held at minus 10, it's not like that. Typically, what happens? Typically, you have Some voltage. and some resistance RZ. This is basically the Zener diode. Right? No, when the open circuit is, uh, when your applied voltage mod wise, remember, remember it's a negative voltage. Remember it's a negative voltage, right? Now, whenever the applied voltage magnitude wise, when the applied voltage is less than the mod of your breakdown voltage. Suppose your breakdown voltage is a minus 10. We said is minus 10. Now, when your applied negative voltage is 0 to 10. 0 to 10. That means you are over here. You are over here. 0 to 10. Sir, Something negative. Sir, what are less than 0 greater than we said over here? Which one? Then we... It's hmm. okay. Mod value, just forget about this absolute value. Right. Suppose your VZ is equal to minus 10. Now, when your applied voltage is from 0 to minus 10, I mean minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. That means you are over here. Something negative happening, but the diode doesn't respond. That is not responding. Negative, something negative is happening, but that is not responding. It's a negative voltage, reverse voltage. Open circuit. Open circuit. There is no response. But whenever uh, this voltage is uh, just uh, approaching towards this voltage to this uh, breakdown voltage, minus 10, then what happens? Momentarily, the current flowing through, so initially it was like few, few microamperes or so, and momentarily the current increases sharply, might not be that sharp. But uh, if it is not that sharp, then uh, it is something like that with a slope, right? Non infinite slope. And then, uh, and that uh, is resulted because of the presence of some resistance. Had there been no resistance over there, then it's a, uh, I mean, that, that slope is, I mean, that, that straight line is parallel to the y axis, right? Infinite slope. But that is not the case. You have some slope over there. And uh, if you have a slope, that means apart from Vz, you have some Rz also present. That is the resistance. So ultimately, the, this voltage difference between this point and this point or this one is no longer exactly equal to Vz, rather Vz plus 
the current which is flowing plus uh, current which is flowing multiplied with the uh, I mean uh, this voltage Vz. Yeah, this one can be represented as V as Vz plus the current which is flowing. Let it be say Iz multiplied with Rz. Right. Remember that Rz value is not that large. Ideally, it should be zero. But even in the breakdown, you understand now, the enormous amount of current is flowing. The corresponding voltage difference is very small, minus 10 to minus 10.5. But the voltage difference, I mean the, I mean the corresponding current changes from say 1 milliampere to say 25 milliampere. That means what is, what is the, I mean, what is the, the behavior of the dial? How does it behave? Too much resistance? No. Very less. Very less. Very less. Because very small amount of change in the voltage results in very large amount of change in the current. Ideally it should be zero, but practically what is that? That value is uh, say few tens of ohms. Say 7 ohms, 9 ohms, 11 ohms, something like that. That is very small, because you have applied very small voltage. The repercussion, the response, because of the diode is very much. And that we can also explain nowadays. Even if the even if the excitation is very small, the amount of protest, amount of agitation is that much. Why? Because now we are in the domain of this breakdown. What I feel, isn't it? Previously, whenever we are in the reverse bias zone, that time uh, it was uh, very small. I mean, the, the amount of negative, uh, the amount of current. Current means what? The response. Resistance. Response of the diode. That is very small. However, be the, the voltage, whatever be the voltage, as long as it is less than uh, this breakdown, mode wise, mode wise, as long as it is less than this, uh, this breakdown, so the response was almost negligibly small. The current was almost zero. But just process that particular breakdown voltage, that is a Vz, then even if the voltage is very small, now try to identify the difference. So here, the resistance as provided by the diode, that resistance was. Very nice. How much? Infinite. Ideally infinite. The aggression is infinite over here, within that range. It was infinite. Okay. And when it is equal to Vz or just greater than Vz, now you see that this is almost either ideally zero or almost zero or practically is very small. 5 ohms, 7 ohms, 9 ohms, something like that. So try to uh, understand that it was very large, say in the range of mega ohms. In the range of mega ohms. Why mega ohms? Because that voltage was like a few volts in the range of volt. That current was how much? Microampere. So volt by microampere. So what is the ratio? It's mega ohms. Isn't it? So over here, this was mega ohms. Reverse balance. That is off. Momentarily when Vz comes, then the, from mega ohms, the, the corresponding resistance drops down to few tens of ohms. Even if some small excitation is there, some small stimulus is there, the corresponding consequence is pretty large in terms of magnitude. Right? But still remember that there should be a limit. This I, I mean, uh, uh, you have to uh, select the other elements in the circuit so that the, the diode current, the general diode current, I mean, the, in, the, in the reverse bias region, in the, in the breakdown region, that current must not cross IZ. If it crosses IZ, then this entire uh, benefit that, uh, that we are supposed to get will be completely lost. Second generation is IZF in the negative region, negative region. So, yes. IZF in the power bias region. Because the I square value of still. Still be there, but remember that voltage for power bias we don't have any concern. For power bias we don't have any concern. We can do this one, we can, we can also achieve this one using a normal diode. Right. But that, that regulation, that, that entire thing, that regulation can only be achieved in the reverse bias region whenever the applied voltage is negative. Then also, yeah, you are true that, that uh, the current, whether it is a negative current or positive current, I square, lo I square R loss will always be positive. Whether it's a positive current or negative current. But remember that current, so this current cannot, cannot exceed a particular limit. Your IZT, that's a test current. This test current cannot exceed a particular limit. For positive, for uh, positive uh, your uh, forward bias region, okay, it is true. But in the reverse bias region, you might think that okay, I, I can uh, I can apply any voltage across this. It's not like that. So 
once again that is having some limitation even if you, if you even if you apply okay minus 10 suppose your system is applying minus 10 minus 11 minus 12 minus, okay to some extent diode will withstand but not always because what happens the current through the diode increases even if it is minus 10 some kind is there suppose Say one, say, suppose here it is 1 milliampere. Then, if, even if you increase this, uh, this voltage, negative voltage, the 1 milliampere to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15. So, outside, if you observe it from the outside, then you'll see that uh, the corresponding uh, current, I mean, the corresponding voltage doesn't change. The corresponding voltage remains the same, but internally, through the diode, the current is increasing. That you, can, that you cannot observe from external world. From external world, this voltage is remaining almost constant. But internally, the current that is flowing through the diode is increasing. So that is the concern of the diode. So you have to employ this diode in such a circuit so that this current cannot be higher than the specified one. Right, but remember, okay, although I'm saying it's a constant, but remember it's not constant, some variation is there. But remember that variation is pretty small with respect to the current variation. Whenever you are in the breakdown, and that is not the case in the uh, reverse bias. In the reverse, it's just the opposite thing. Sir, in the reverse phase, means the current should not be greater than the I Z N. Yes. Not in reverse phase, I should say that is all that is in the reverse, it's basically the breakdown region, right? In the breakdown region. Because this breakdown will not happen until unless your applied voltage is, is uh, exactly equal to mod Z or uh, your uh, greater than these physics. Sir, I think battery time is equal to normal time. Now, comp time, not. Depending upon the voltage that you have. If you increase this voltage now, so from where you are applying this voltage, there is some other source externally because this diode is connected inside the circuit and there is some other source that is supplying that reverse bias voltage. Right. So you cannot have any amount of reverse bias voltage. Right. If I want to get a 5 volt constant output, but there is a triple nerve. At some point, it will be greater than 5 volt, and that can be this, uh, give constant output to 5. At some time, it will be less than 5 volt. There is a difference. So, in that sense, how can No, the applied volt, as I have told you, that all this idea, no? I'm just showing you. <coughs> yes. Let me just observe what happens in the reverse bias. In the reverse bias, Actually, this is not constant. The current, I mean, the voltage is not constant. What happens at this particular point? Suppose this voltage is say Pz1, and suppose this is my maximum current that the diode can withstand, and this voltage is say Pz2. Right. So you see here, whenever I am observing this one from the diode perspective, Pz1 to Pz, I mean, the this voltage is Pz1 to Pz2. That is the voltage across the two terminals of the diodes. So what is that? Uh, uh, I have already written this one. This is nothing but uh, VKA. Okay, this VKA is nothing but your uh, little bit some VZ plus some RZ times IZ. Right, VZ, uh, VKA is equal to VZ plus some RZ times IZ. Now that voltage, this variation in the voltage is applied from some external world. But across the two terminals of the diode, across the two terminals of the diode, what I am getting, I am getting, I am getting only VKA, that means VZ plus RZ IZ. And remember that, that VZ is constant, that VZ is constant, that battery, and your RZ is very small. Right, RZ is very small, so even if there is very large fluctuation of IZ, so ultimately this RZ IZ product is very small. So suppose this voltage is equal to say 5 volt, for example, and suppose this voltage is only say 0.1 volt or 0.2 volt. So that variation is very small. But remember, the diode is withstanding this one because of a very small value of RZ. But internally through the diode, the corresponding current which is flowing, the magnitude of the current is pretty large. But you cannot allow any value which is greater than IZM. At this point, greater than IZM, but externally what is happening? Externally, the applied voltage is very large. Suppose externally you have applied from 100 to 200, for example. 
but across the diode, diode, diode is able to withstand that voltage. Up to 200, suppose, for I'll say 20, I'm not going to 200, suppose it is 20. Up to 20, it is fine. But if it is more than that, then the current will be, will be enormously large, higher than IZM, then the diode, then the diode will lose this operation. Sir, IZM for burning or but the for this it should be within IZM. Should be within IZM. And accordingly, these regulations, so we can have. So, based on that, so whenever I'm using the Zener diode as a regulator, forget about this one. I'm coming to that. And then comes this particular parameter, which is which is called the line regulation. What is that? The change in the output divided by the change in the input. The ratio of these two is nothing but your line regulation. And for a diode or for a general diode, which can act as a good regulator, right? For them, this delta V out is very small with respect to delta V in. What is that delta V? That means from external world, from external world, you are applying large change in input. input. It's not that from VZ1 to VZ2. Large change in input voltage from external world. From that uh, unregulated power supply, from that filter output. Once again, let's go back. In our first slide, from where we have started today. The filter output is basically the input to the dynamic uh, the general regulator circuit. Now that, that fluctuation might be very large, say from 10 volt to say uh, say 10 volt to say 15 volt, for example. But the diode across its two terminals in the breakdown region can provide almost constant voltage. And that, that okay, some variation will be there, you cannot expect exactly zero, but that variation is small with respect to uh, your delta V in. After the voltage regulation. Hmm. So, so suppose your delta V out, say only 0.1 uh, volt, and uh, delta V in is equal to say, uh, say 10 volt. Sir, the voltage. In the uh, uh, given part, the voltage in the lowest point is uh, that should be must be greater than or equal to Vz, the lowest point voltage. Otherwise, we cannot. Yes. That voltage, the voltage across the two terminals of the diode. In the given part, the, the least, least uh, lower peak or corresponding voltage must be greater than or equal to Vz, right? Hmm. Okay, so that, that is the notion of the, your line regulation. Delta V out or delta V in. There can be some change in the delta V in. Delta V in might be changed by say 10 volt, but delta V out is, is small, say 0.1 volt only. That, that means ultimately it will give you good regulation. Right? Sir, that is one thing. Sir, RDS line is it also weight and respect and take one to Okay. Okay, so what is your delta V out? Delta V out is here. So delta V out is what? Delta V out is nothing but Vz2 minus Vz1. That means across the two terminals of the diode, what is the change that you are expecting? If, if the diode is placed across the load resistance. If the diode is placed across the load resistance, then that will be your voltage variation, Vz2 minus Vz1. Right? And what about the input fluctuations? You never know. You never know from where it is coming. So that fluctuation is small with respect to that fluctuation is small with respect to that input fluctuation. Yes. Okay. So that is the notion of line regulation. That is one thing. And the second part is, so whenever uh, there is a regulation, there is a notion of regulation, you understand that. The current that is flowing in the load circuit, the current is not also is fixed. The current is also changed because I have already told you this RZ component. You have this RZ component, VZ plus or rather V is equal to VZ plus RZ IZ. You have some battery plus some resistance. So whenever the current is flowing through this resistance, drop will take place RZ times IZ. Now, since the value of Rz is typically very small because uh, the diode is uh, exhibiting some very low resistance in the breakdown region, and that is the notion of breakdown. You cannot resist. Now, when it is when it comes to breakdown, you cannot resist something, right? 
the resistance power is very small, that is almost zero close to zero. That happens. So that's why, irrespective of your current, the current that is flowing through the diode, irrespective of the current, the voltage is joining almost. You know, whenever somebody is, is in grief, no? then whatever be the amount of uh, scolding, it's almost uh, the behavior is joining almost constant, almost. But obviously, we have to maintain some decorum because beyond certain limit, there can be some outburst. It happens. People in isolation or people as a part in the society. Right? And same thing also happens with drive. Right? Any doubts? No. Yes, but remember, this IZ, okay, IZ is flowing internally. Right? It's flowing internally in, inside the diode, but remember, you are not allowed to have a very large mirror by there. So that because of this I square R loss, then ultimately this entire, entire system breaks down. Right? There should be some limit. Yes. Yeah? So one is known as line regulation, and whenever it comes to the, the current part, whether the current is uh, very small or current is very large, and then you have another another uh, regulation uh, component which is known as a load regulation. What is that? This load regulation is given by the difference in the no load voltage minus the no load voltage and the full load voltage. So what is known as no load voltage? That means the load voltage when there is no load current. So VNL is when, whenever there is no load current. When the load current is absent, then what about the voltage? That is the V no VNL, the no load voltage. And what is VFL? That is the full load voltage, full load output voltage. That means whenever the maximum load current is going uh, through the load. So that difference, VNL minus VFL divided by the VFL, that is the full load output voltage. So that will give you the load regulation. So these are the two motions, the two performance parameters associated with this uh, general regulation. One is known as the line regulation. Second one is known as the load regulation, right? Now, let me uh, come back to the uh, mathematical part because these are two ways basically the abstraction part. Now, in the practical circuit, what happens? So, let's have a look at this circuit. Suppose this is the voltage VI, which can be varied. And because of that change, obviously this voltage will be different. Now here, this side is positive, this side is negative. So essentially the diode is reverse current. It's quite obvious. So whenever we discuss the regulation or general regulator, remember, general is acting in the reverse current region. It's not in the forward current, it's in the reverse current. That means this side is positive, this side positive, this side negative. And the diode is kind in that fashion, so obviously that voltage, I mean this voltage is positive with respect to this voltage. It's a negative voltage, right? There's no doubt about that. That means you are in the reverse current region. Then, if this voltage, as long as this voltage, if it is, say, less than Z, if this voltage is less than Z, then what happens? Zero. Less than Z, that is off. Essentially, that is off. Assuming that that's an ideal diode, that is off. No current. No current. That means this voltage, this voltage, and this voltage, this two are same. Right? Or I can say that there is no current through the diode. There is no current through the diode. If, if you connect some resistance, some load resistance across this, then the current can flow through this. Right. This acts as a this acts as an open circuit. If you connect something in parallel in the form of RL, then obviously you understand that okay, the current will flow through this path. So there is no role of this diode over there. As long as VI is less than VI. Reverse saturation current, yeah. The current will flow, but current will flow through this R RL combination. If you connect some RL over there. If you do not connect any RL, then there is no current. Right? Now, what happens when the applied voltage VI is greater than or equal to VZ? When the applied voltage is greater than or equal to VZ, then the diode enters from the, uh, your reverse bias to breakdown region. Because now, so, actually this is acting as your external voltage, external stimulation, 
right so input fluctuation is there and when this voltage is just greater than or equal to your vz that voltage vz is given for a, for a given that it is fixed right yes so when this applied voltage vi is greater than vz then the diode is on on means what on in the breakdown region is not a forward now remember it's not a forward now and they are forward in the breakdown region try to identify the direction of the current the breakdown region the current flows from cathode to anode not from anode to cathode yes right so the current flows from cathode to anode the reverse current remember okay the protest that is happening now nowadays is is not a something positive no it's something negative a protest against me so the current is flowing from cathode to anode hmm ऑब्जर्व you have a zener dot placed something like that right plus minus suppose there is no other resistance now what happens if vi this one is say vz this one is vi now when this vi is less than vz there is no other way for the current to flow <coughs> no current now when vi is exactly equal to vz then you understand that okay now now this will be regarded now this will be regarded as now this will be regarded as this battery plus this resistance right then what is the voltage over there that voltage is obviously this voltage vi so what minus the current vi is equal to vz hmm then there will be a drop across the rs resistor and it will be less than vz no just consider the extreme case just that plus vi is equal to vz then what happens then there is a drop across the rs resistor hmm. and then the potential across the diodes will not it will be less than vc so it should be open like slightly greater than that yeah slightly greater than that i am coming to the example some numerical example right and uh, you understand that what is the zener current zener current if i have Uh, some if i have some uh, load resistance connected in parallel then obviously some load resistance connected in parallel then obviously uh, the current whenever the diode is on when the diode is on then the the current through the resistance is uh, divided into two segment one is the current through the zener and second one is the current through the load resistance and here comes the switch whenever you connect some load resistance now you have to select the load resistance properly so that ultimately the diode can provide the regulation what is the meaning of the sentence whenever the applied voltage is small enough vi is small enough this one is small enough you understand that vi is small and then uh, diode might enter into the breakdown just i mean the volt applied voltage is just greater than the new voltage i mean the i mean the, uh, the corresponding current that is flowing through the diode is just greater than this new current iz k right then the current the rest of the current will be flowing through this resistance rn now when the applied voltage is very large when the applied voltage is very large then you understand that this current is also large right because you have more excitation then obviously this kind is also large yes. then you have to select the value of rl in such a way that the current through the zener diode cannot be higher than izm accordingly you have to select rl you have more contributions more current is coming from this side more current is coming from this side now you have only two branches this side and this side two two branches are there this current and this current okay 
So, but truth is, you understand that truth is register, you can have uh, say plenty of current. And accordingly, you can select the value of the register. But truth is diode, you cannot allow, when one cannot allow any, any current which is greater than IZ. So, if you have more current through this, then you should bypass this current through this. So that at max IZM current can flow through this. Yes. Right? On the other hand, if the current is small, small amount of current because of small excitation, if the current is small, you can provide at least IZK current through this. So that the diode can be in the uh, breakdown region. So you cannot, so that's why the outputs, that's why the input to this regulator circuit, input to the regulator circuit is not your uh, sinusoidal signal. Rather, the filter output is your input to the regulator circuit. That's what I told you, na? The filter output is your, I mean, what is the, what is the, uh, out, what, is, what should be the, what should be the input to this? Something like this. No one can avoid this. This del V out of a del V in, na? This del V cannot be that much. Zero to hundred volts per second. Yes, you have to connect externally, but accordingly you have to select the hello part. For a given VZ, or a given Zenar diode, for a given Zenar diode, you know all the specifications, you know what is the VZ value, what is the RZ value, you know, you know this. And uh, so you know what is my IZQ, what is my IZM. So accordingly, and you also you, you must have some idea about what what is the, what should be the uh, what is the corresponding VI fluctuations, whether it is from 10 to 20 volt or from 5 to 15 volt. You must have some guess. Uh, you must have some idea, prior idea. So problem If you have more fluctuation, okay, I am coming to that because uh, for a given so this is your input side and this is the load side. Okay, this is the input side. This is the load side. These two are connected. These two are connected. Now, there could have been two types of problems. Either you know the specification of this, you know what is my RL, what is my Zenon diode, I mean what is my VZ, what is my IZK, what is my IZM, what is my RZ, you know everything. Then you know, okay, this is my capacity. So I can have this much of input fluctuation so that I can maintain breakdown or I can maintain regulation. I can be there in the uh, breakdown region and I can maintain the regulation. That is one side. That means you know, I mean, you are, uh, I mean, that means you are visualizing yourself as, as, as an element in the load side. And I know my limitations, I know these are my specifications, and accordingly I can afford this, this much change at the input side. That is one thing. And the second thing is that, suppose you are a source. You are, I mean, the corresponding change is, is taking place at this end. You are changing this voltage from say 10 volt to 10, 20 volt or say 20 volt to 40 volt. And then, suppose you would like to have that uh, uh, regulation at the output side. Okay? So here you are, you are at the receiving end. You are at the receiving end whenever you are personifying yourself as this, uh, this resistance and this uh, diode combination. And you are at the transmitting end whenever you are personifying yourself as a, as a source element. Then you know, suppose your requirement is that uh, my input fluctuation will be from 20 volt to 40 volt. And then also I would like to have a regulation. Then accordingly, you have to select the corresponding elements. You have to select corresponding uh, Zenon diode, you have to select corresponding load resistance, so that because you are at the and source side, you are at the transmitting side, you know that, okay, this is my fluctuation, this should be my fluctuation from 20 volt to 40 volt, and I would like to have a regulation, right? So how can I achieve this? What, what should be the corresponding element? By virtue of this, I can achieve this regulation. And accordingly, you have to select those RL value, you have to select those uh, Zenon diode, so that this regulation is possible. It's not that uh, any fluctuation over there, uh, any combination over there at the input side and any diode resistance combination at the, at the output side uh, cannot, uh, will, will solve this part. It's not like that. Because that is the requirement from this side and this is the requirement from the, from the source side. The source requirement and the load requirement must match. Source wants that, okay, the fluctuation, source wants that, okay, 
uh, my change is from 20 volt to 40 volt. And say if the load side says that no, I can say I can I can have a regulation say from 20 volt to only 30 volt, not beyond that. Then obviously it will not be possible. Right. Okay, I will uh, explain some of the problems so that you can Okay, th that thing I have already mentioned. So hopefully whenever we will discuss the problem, then you will understand this in a much better way. Okay. okay. So the first problem is determine the minimum and maximum input voltages that can be regulated by the Zener tower. That means you are classifying yourself as an element in the load side. That is given. Specification is given. Vz is equal to 5.1 volt and Iz is equal to 49 milliampere. Izk is given as 1 milliampere. Zz that means the resistance of Zener is given as 7 ohms. And PD max that means the maximum uh, power dissipation across the Zener diode is given by 1 watt. It cannot be higher than 1 watt. If it is more than 1 watt then this uh, power dissipation capacity is lost completely and uh, therefore the diode will be damaged. So one cannot have any, uh, I mean the voltage difference, I mean the, the, the power loss uh, greater than 1 watt. It is not just possible. So, uh, you have to identify the minimum and the maximum input voltages that can be regulated by this energy. Remember, this is a test, test voltage. Vz is a test voltage. This is a test voltage, 5.1 volt. At Iz is equal to 49 milliampere. Test current is a test current and test voltage, these two are given. So, what I can write is V or V out, this V out is nothing but this Vz plus Iz, uh, I should write Izt test current multiplied with Zz. That is the formula or Vzt, Vzt plus Vzt plus Izt multiplied Zz. Okay. Zz is 7 ohms, yeah. It's not an ideal one. It's not an ideal. You have some Vz, some Vz. But that Vz is not equal to 5.1, remember. So how to solve this? First of all, when V is minimum, so here you don't have any resistance. You don't have any external resistance, only if the Zener is present, right? So you, you must know or you must understand that when this V is minimum, then V out is also minimum. When V is maximum, then V out is also maximum. That is quite obvious. But remember that V fluctuation is small, uh, large, but V out fluctuation is small. This fluctuation is much more as compared to this fluctuation over there. So that the regulation, percentage line regulation is relatively small. Clear? So, what will be your uh, V in when the test, when the Zener current is only 1 milliampere? Okay, that uh, series resistance is given as 100 ohms. Okay. Again, oh, now you are out of mobile phone, no? Now you are out of mobile phone, no? Now you are out of mobile phone, no? Okay. So, what about your V out? V out is nothing but, eventually what I, what I can understand, there you have, remember, there you have, this one, <laughs> right, plus minus Vz, plus uh, and then you have some R0 or ZZ, let it be ZZ. ZZ, right? You don't know VZ. You don't know VZ. VZ, 
at z is equal to 5.1 volt at i z is equal to 49 milli 49 milli amps. Okay. So one thing is very clear that whenever your v in is minimum, then v out is also minimum. When v in is maximum, v out is also maximum. Now i z k is one milli ampere. I z k one milli ampere, right? So when when the current through the zener is minimum, then obviously this input voltage is minimum. Then that is only the driving force. Okay. So one milli ampere is here. What about this voltage then? Almost zero. Why zero? No, not is it? Yeah, it's V out. You have to calculate now. It's V out. <laughs> yeah, it's V out. So V minus I. What is that? What is your V out? V out is given by V Z plus I Z times Z Z. Yeah, uh, I say one I am coming to that. That I mean, so, so, V out I Oh, I want to give this one. So V out at I Z K. What is that? V out at I Z K. How can I write this one? This is basically V Z. Take a look at this. V Z plus I Z K times Z Z. Right? Okay, so let me call this one is Vz, so to make sense, V out at any test current Iz T, what is that? Vz plus Iz T Vz plus Iz T times Zz. Okay? Yes. <laughs> So from this, you already know what is I Z K. No, T is the test current. Now you know V out at I Z T. Sir, sir, V Z five point one to at I Z at I Z T eight eight is what? Equation that the I Z K in which is upon V Z. Take a, take, a, take a look at this one. Take a look at this one. That is my output, right? So what is that? You have some Vz plus Iz times Zz. Now, whenever the current is Zk, Izk, then this V out at Izk is what? This Vz plus Izk times Zz. And whenever the current is some test current, greater than Izk, this is the same Vz plus Izt times Zz. Now what is given to you? Izk is given 1 milliampere. Some test current 49 milliampere is given to you. And at this test current, the corresponding volt is also given. That is 5.1 volt. Zz is given. Right? So from there, can you calculate Vz? Without Izt also, we can calculate Calculate it and tell me what is the V out when I is equal to I Z. Without V out, without V Z also you can calculate. There is no, no doubt about it. So we have to calculate V Z at I Z. V Z at V out at I Z. V out at I Z. Sir. 
This value of visit is always always same. This is visit, always visit. That is, that is constant. That is it's not five point one. No, it is confusing. Okay, this is this visit and that visit. This one not the same. Remember. So it is better. I should write I V Z T here. Then you can understand. V Z T. Yeah, this is V Z T. And I Z T, right? Then we will need I Z T. Yeah, this is visit T. This is I Z T. This is visit T. Test current. Yes. What is I Z K? I Z K is one milliampere given. Okay. Like what is it? That is also a test. Right? No, that's the minimum. That is the new one. Okay. So, if I V Z T, another one. Yeah, this V Z T will be the same. No, this is a, this V Z T will be the same. So you have battery. No, you have battery plus some drop across Z Z. Just calculate and tell me what is the what is the V out at I Z T. This pretty is just sub subtract the expression one from expression two. Suppose this is equation one, right? This is equation one. This is equation two. This is equation one. This is equation two. The subtract one from two. What do you know? You know V out and I Z T. You know. You know I Z K. You know I Z T. You know Z Z. So you just you can calculate V out I Z T. V Z N turn into third degree question. Isn't it? You know this one. You know this one. You know this one. You know this one. You can calculate this one. So, but OEBZ or BZT tag? No, that's written like BZT. Element confusion. What is that? What value you are getting? TH multiplied with seven. Difference in current. Difference in current is forty eight million. Is it? Forty eight million plus multiplied by seven ohms. What is that? Forty eight into seven. Forty eight million plus seven. That that must be the volt. Three hundred thirty six. Three hundred thirty six million volt. That means point three three six volt. So it will be less than this. Five four five point one minus point three three six. Four point eight. What is it? Four point seven six. Four point seven. Okay, let it be four point seven six. So four point six four point seven six is your V out at I Z T, right? V out at I Z T. That is four point seven six. Okay, and then what is asked? Determine the minimum and maximum input voltage. So 4.76 is the minimum output voltage, right? What is the current flowing? One milliampere. Yeah, we will add. One milliampere is flowing through hundred ohms. So hundred ohms into one point one point one volt. So 4.76 plus that is 4.86. Yes. So that is the minimum input range. 4.86. So we are personifying you as As a as a diode, as a as a load. Specifications are given. V Z I mean the I Z T A I Z T and all these values are given. Z Z is given. And based on that, now you can say, okay, I so with these specifications, the minimum input voltage can be 4.86, not less than that. Any voltage less than 4.86 cannot be regulated. There must be a limit, no? Right? So that is the minimum input voltage. So how to find out the maximum one? How to find out the maximum one? Maximum input voltage. So power divided by power divided by I. 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 I.
You can find out Vz, na? What is Vz? Vz have you calculated? What is Vz value? Forty nine to seven. Five point one minus this. I point one minus fourteen into seven. What is Vz? Vz is how much? This one was five point one. Four point seven five. Maybe four point seven five. Four point seven five four. Four point seven five. That is the battery voltage of the Vz, right? And this will four point seven five. Then P by I. I mean, uh, your uh, this PD is equal to one watt. PD is equal to one watt. So PD by this four point seven five. No, sorry, four point seven five. PD by four point seven five will give you this I Z max. V into I. <coughs> right. Seven point three nine. Huh? Seven point three nine six. Seven point. Seven point three nine six. Maximum voltage. No, maximum voltage. Oh, seven point three nine six. Let me check. What is the maximum current? So point two one. Huh? Point two one. Point two one. What? Milli. Ah, point two one ampere. That is two hundred ten. Two hundred ten. Negative two hundred ten. So what is the IZM you are getting? Once you get IZM, once you get IZM, then uh, what should be the accordingly you can find find out V out at IZM, VZ plus uh, IZM into ZZ. Calculate this one, and then add this to this current. I then have already calculated that current multiplied with hundred ohms. Then this will give you the maximum uh, input voltage that can be regulated. So this is a kind of problem uh, from from that uh, part from the from the load perspective, right? Whole process. So here. The specification is given in terms of your load. Hey, no problem. Here, the specification is given in terms of load. That means uh, the tire specification is given in terms of I Z T, I Z K, I Z, uh, and then P Z T, and all these things. I Z T is given, Z Z is given. Now you are asked to find out the minimum input voltage and the maximum input voltage that can be regulated. Right. So you are you are in the load side. You are sitting in the load side. And you are directing at the source end, right? So accordingly, uh, you know uh, this diode. Since it's a not a not an ideal diode, so therefore this can be visualized as this battery plus some ZZ, non-zero non ZZ. So accordingly, this V out is given by VZ plus IZ times ZZ. Now what is given? Uh, IZ K is given. VZ T is given. 5.1 volt. I Z is given as 49 milli ampere. So from that you can calculate what is my V out at I Z T. What is my V out at I Z K? Now when you calculate this V out at I Z K, then this is the voltage across this two terminal. Sir, sir why do we add V Z T? V Z will be constant. Ah, uh -huh. no. V Z is equal to 5.1 at I Z is equal to 49. So whenever uh, your voltage is equal to whenever the current is 49 is flowing through this 49 milli ampere. Then the current that you are, that is the voltage that you are measuring over here is basically 5.1 volt. So remember, this voltage is having two components. One is that constant DC plus the current that, that means the voltage which is uh, developed across this headset. Two components, right? Because it's not an ideal one. Had this been ideal, then it should be the same. So based on that, you calculate what is my, uh, uh, I mean, uh, your DZ and all these things. DZ is only the unknown thing because everything is given. IZ is given. Uh, ZZ is given. So you can calculate IZM also from this PD max. You can calculate and we apply the same thing. So once you identify this V out minimum and V out maximum, 
you notice my beam basically the 100 ohms uh, resistance is there so the corresponding current izk times 100 ohms for the minimum input voltage and izm times 100 ohms for the maximum input voltage because that drop you have to take into account input voltage is equal to this input voltage is equal to this drop plus this output voltage already get the v out minimum and v out maximum v out minimum is this one izk that's right what is the what are the two components of here one is a constant battery plus this is uh, then this drop across is zz so when the current is minimum then the drop is minimum when the current is maximum then the drop is maximum so that because that is constant na vz is constant sir izm ta pay gala k for ki izm you got izm z into zz plus vz is your v out max vz ta charge jeta calculate korechilam 4.75 volt same same thing same thing yes sir you have got v out max sir iz max ta ibo ki calculate korbo pd max is given as 1 watt pd max pd max is given maximum power is given maximum power what is power voltage into current kintu ami je mane voltage v to i hocche i max par dekha ekhon that voltage you can call okay because this voltage this entire voltage or that because this voltage is a, is a dominating one right this one is dominating no out of this 4.86 or 4.7 or 4.76 or 4.75 is coming out of out of this so whether you calculate based on 4.75 or 4.76 doesn't matter na b into i would say hmm. i jo maximum the view to the maximum huh? what i'm saying that volt that fluctuation is not that much that fluctuation is not that much because mostly this is constant this is constant and this this uh, uh, variation is there and this variation is also small the yeah, i square out for then p and over p by r cheta kulo kotha ma cheta kulo dasi jeta 0.378 0.378 0.378 maximum i square out the री प्लस दिस ड्रॉप दिस बैटरी प्लस दिस ड्रॉप आई मीन द ड्रॉप अक्रॉस दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस राइट नाउ इफ यू डू आई स्क्वायर आर यू हैव सिंगल रेजिस्टेंस ऑन राइट हियर दिस वोल्टेज इज टिपिकली कांस्टेंट दिस वोल्टेज ऑलमोस्ट कांस्टेंट दिस वोल्टेज इज ऑलमोस्ट कांस्टेंट क्लोज टू योर 4.75 व्हाट एवर इट मे यू कैन आल्सो टेक इट 5.1 आल्सो at test test voltage you can also consider okay 5.1 that voltage this is not that bad fluctuation okay now it is if it is 1 watt then uh, that can be the maximum current which is going sir so the expression that we call mane 4.75 vz plus iz m da mane 5.21 into 7 hmm plus 100 into 0.21 plus 100 into 0.21 yes plus 100 into 0.21 मिनिम and with a uh, 0.1 volt drop across this resistance 4.86 okay hopefully they have calculated using this 5.1 only that vi drop it's okay
They have considered visit only. They have not considered, I mean, that visit means your this 5.1. That 5.1. That's the 196 million. Yeah. What's your result? 27.2. Actually, here they are providing 25.7. 25.7 over there. Right. Now, what about the line regulation? What about the input fluctuation? Say, let it be your 4.86 to how much? 25.7. 25.7. So 4 to 25, 6 times, almost 6 times, so 5 times. So 5 to 25, 5 times, right? What about the output fluctuation? 4.86 to, uh, 4.76 to something like 6 point something. 50% change. And there you have 5 times, 500 times. Is it it? That is 50% only. The line regulation is less than or close to 10%. Okay. Next comes another set of problem, another type of problem. Yeah. Now this time, this time, you are sitting at the source end. Right. And you are dictating the, the load. Determine the minimum and maximum load currents for which the Zener will maintain the regulation. Nah, nah. This time the, the source specification is given to you and with some other additional specifications, you are asked to find out what could be the minimum and the maximum load currents. <laughs> okay, I think it will be completed by 440. <laughs> yeah, which one? Six point one three. Uh, so four point seven six was your uh, V out minimum. <laughs> Silence. V out minimum was four point seven six, and V out max was six point one three. So 4.76 is almost 5, 5 to 6. So flux is only 1 volt. So we have 6.13 here. Right? So 4.76 to 6.13. And for input it was 4.86 to 25 point something. Right. Okay, so this one is relatively easy. Why? IZK is given 1 milliampere. IZM is also given 50 milliampere. And assumption is that the generator is ideal with Z0. Yes, sir. Right? Oh, more. Already you have. Already you have the slides. With, right? So if you can understand this problem by yourself and its solution, then I'm ready to give it as a moment. Okay. I require only five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Okay. Now, <laughs> it is easy this time because you have only one battery, nothing else. 12 volt. Right? Only one battery, 12 volt. No resistance. IZK is given as 1 milliampere, IZM is given as 50 milliampere. Okay? Input voltage is 24 volt, that is also fixed. Right? Now, the only thing which is unknown is your load resistance, RL. Right? So 24 volt here, 12 volt there. What is the difference? Every time it is 12 volt. Both of them are fixed. This side also fixed 24 volt. This side also fixed 12 volt. Right? What is the current which is flowing through this resistance? Calculate 12 volt by 470. What is that? Just calculate 12 volt by 12 volt by 470. Around. Uh, 25.5 25.5 25.5 milliampere 
25.5 milliampere is the current which is flowing through this, right? What is the maximum general current? 50, right? Maximum general current is 50. So can this entire 25.5, can, can it be flown through this? Is it allowed? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes because uh, the maximum limit is 50, so I can have all these 25 through this. Right? Can use that RLs. Which RLs? Like, so now, what is the use of the RL? Yes, I am coming to that. The current, that current is 25.5. So I can have this entire 25.5 through this. No problem. In that case, this RL is basically an open circuit. Right? And this time, what is your load current? That is the minimum load current. What is the minimum load current? What is that? Zero. Zero. Because your diode can, I mean the zener diode can have this entire current. Right? It can digest this entire current, 25.10. But suppose I'd like to have some, I'd like to provide some load current into the into the uh, into the RL also. Right. So in that case, I have to extract that current from the zener because the total current is fixed, 25.5. I can have this entire current, I can feed this entire current to the zener, no problem. Or what I can do, now I can, uh, now this time your load current is zero, that is the minimum load current, IL minimum. So what is your RL max? Infinity. Right? Then, if I want to have some uh, load current through RL, then one thing is very sure that you have to provide at least one milliampere zener current. There is a minimum requirement, right? So one milliampere current has to be there through this, at least. And then only uh, because this is constant, twenty-five point five. If this is minimum, that should be maximum. If it is one, then it should be twenty-four point five, right? So that is the maximum load current, twenty-four point five. And for which your load ratio is the minimum. So, 12 by 24.5. 12 by 24.5 will give you the minimum load ratio. What is the maximum load ratio? Right? Now, this is very easy because you have only 12 volt there. Your ZZ is equal to 0. And had, had this been something like that, then it will be even more complicated. Right? Yes, if ZZ is non-zero, then uh, it will be even more complicated. But that should be the uh, way how to solve this kind of problem. Okay? So with this, let me conclude this uh, discussion on Zener regulator.